figure I shall show, which came out, um, was the Sontaran. Now, the Sontarans were one of my favourite monsters, and they released two Sontarans. A normal Sontaran, which I never got, and a Sontaran Captain, which we have here. Um, now, I actually, after seeing images, the proper Sontaran, prefer the proper Sontaran. But, the, and I, but I could never find it again afterwards, but the Sontaran Captain, um, which is in some form of outfit that never actually appeared on screen, it was just a repaint, but it was a clever idea just to have that sort of... to show that there was different rankings in the Sontaran army, clever way of doing it. Unfortunately, it's sort of based on the two Doctors in terms of height, because it's really tall, as opposed to being short. The sculpt is really nice. The, they've captured the look of the, the suits, the armour, pretty well. They've got the little belt with the little device on there and the, the knee pads have been sculpted onto the top of the boots and the gloves and things are really good and you can see they've got the elbow pads as well and of course one of the key things about this figure is that the helmet is removable and you have a very nice looking Sontaran underneath no weapon unfortunately which did annoy me slightly but actually it was a very good figure they've even got the probic vent at the back of the neck so, all in all, the Sontarans were very good. Like I said, never ended up getting the proper Sontaran. But the Sontaran Captain was always a figure that I used to, to love playing with. It's the Melka. Strictly speaking, this isn't really a monster, it's a TARDIS. Sorry if I've spoiled it for you, for those who haven't seen the Keeper of Trotten. I suppose they were releasing it in conjunction with the Master, Master and his TARDIS. I don't know, that's, that's always been my logic behind it. But it's a very good sculpt. It's really, really good. And it's got this wonderful texture to it, which sort of feels quite sort of stony. And it's a, just one colour, it's just a tan colour. But then they've sort of put a speckled... They've sort of speckled over the top of it to give it this stony quality. You may not see it very well on camera, but in the flesh it's excellent. And they've painted the eyes red, like his eyes glowing red when he would sort of come alive and move around the groves of Traken and shoot people. So an interesting release, but a very good one. The sculpt is, like I said, is fantastic. The last monster to be released was the early Cyberman. This came out in 2001, the same time as the Staction figure of Pat Troughton. Again, like I said, no articulation. Now, this figure was excellent. I loved it. Even though you couldn't move the, the bugger's limbs, it was actually very good. And it was a sign of good things to come, in a way. Although we lost the articulation, which I remember being very annoyed about, it looked great. Um, again on a stand that you could remove but unfortunately in 2002 the BBC decided not to renew the license and so the Yeti that was also planned uh, never saw the light of day if you go onto richardwho.com you can see pictures of the prototype painted and unpainted of the Yeti it looks really really good um, and you can also see unpainted prototypes of the Cyberman and Pat Troughton as well, as well as the William Hartnell, which I forgot to mention in my last review. So thanks for watching this review, guys. That is the monsters of the Daypole range, and in my next review I shall be looking at Davros and the Daleks, because it's such a big topic. So thanks for watching, guys, and I shall see you then. Mm -hmm.